How did firms increase their profits and revenue? Billing rates remains, remains one of the key things. 73.9% said they retained profitability levels through raising billing rates. Now it's down slightly from, from 2013, but that's consistent with most of our prior years, as you can see from the, as you can see from the chart. Interesting enough too, though, is that even though they've increased billing rates, so for the last couple of years on our survey, the Pennsylvania MPs have said, hey, look, the reason we were able to increase revenue, increase profits is because we raised billing rates. And a lot of consultants have said, how did they do that in this environment? Interesting now, though, that, again, looking at the national surveys, a lot of the bigger firms are raising their rates, and they're raising them at a substantially higher rate than the smaller firms. So it's just sort of interesting to, to note. I don't know if they're making up for lost time or what. And, and what I've been told is even if you take a blended rate, meaning like, okay, this is what the firm says they're, they're asking for and what they're actually recovering, they're still, they're still, you know, I think Eric was citing something along the lines of, you know, a lot of firms are probably getting at least 3% or more. You know, a lot of firms are just doing that. You know, they may be asking for 5 to 6, but they're getting at least 3, and that's not bad. You know, they're still getting ahead of inflation. What's another tack that they used? And, and we've seen firms seem to be getting more, especially larger firms, seem to be getting more nimble about this, and that's switching practice focus to higher demand areas. I mean, one of the interesting things, and this is something that I'd love to, ha we've written about before, and I'd love to hear feedback from you guys, whether here or another time, is we've noticed that like, when there's a big thing out there, so the mortgage foreclosure crisis, or some of these other, you know, or e-discovery, guys creating practice, you know, practice groups, or, you know, special teams, and that kind of thing, and, and, and I know some people say, hey, look, no, it really, we get business from it. It really works. Other people are like, hey, look, it's just marketing spin. But I wonder if sometimes if that stuff is having a positive effect and if it is, if it is you're getting a return on investment for that and if that's working. It, se it certainly seems that firms have gotten pretty adept at that and they cite it frequently for, the, for why they've maintained their profitability levels and they've increased revenue. And as you can say, see, 30.4% cited this as a, ways that, as a way they maintain profitability. And that's up slightly from last year, um, but as you can see from the private, previous couple years, it's still fairly consistent. So that's, you know, it's a tried and true formula, which means what, which tells me firms are not being stagnant. They're not being, they're not just sitting around waiting to see what happens. They're trying to adapt to, to the market forces. And I think that's a compliment to firms in a way because, you know, law firms weren't always known for being nimble. And it seems that, you know, at least to some degree, they're adjusting a little bit. Another factor cited was reduced partner compensation. Now, this was down a lot from prior years. And I, f I thought this was a little bit interesting. Only 4.3 said they, they reduced partner compensation. And in 2013, 18.5% did it, and 11.5% in 2012. It's also interesting because that trend seems to be accelerating in the largest firms across the country. Another thing that um, some folks have talked to me about is not only are you seeing greater stratification among law firms nationally, but within law firms, the ratio between, you know, the, the difference between what the highest compensated partner makes and the lowest compensated equity partner makes is increasing apparently, especially at the larger firms. And that, not only is increasing, the rate at which it's increasing is becoming more rapid. And that, some people have told me, some thought leaders have told me, you know, is going to create other interesting dilemmas for firms as they try to grow because what's going to happen? You know, at what point, you know, look, are firms going to kick those people out or are those people going to revolt? And does that create opportunity for people? Layoffs and de-equitization. So as you can see, 17.4% said they laid off support staff, which is up from 2013's numbers. Now, you know, that's something that just consistently is on the table, um, and, and they constantly do it. At the same time, I hear a lot of people say that they don't know what kind of return the law firms are getting because support staff, reason, you know, you know, by comparison, makes so much less than what you know, a lot of associates make who maybe are underperforming or not really a mask capacity. So that's, I find it interesting. And I wonder at one point, when, when is that, when do they run out of that as a tool? You know, at one point, are they going to have, you know, too, too few support staff? 26.1% um, said they reduced the number of equity partners. Now, that was up significantly from the year over year. Which is also, which is a little bit weird, though, when you talk about reduced comp partner compensation. I, I personally would think you'd see, you sort of see them marry each other a little bit. You reduce partner compensation for some folks, and then depreciation of others. But it doesn't quite match up here on this survey. Um, but 26.1 percent said they reduced the number of equity partners. Last year it was 14.8 um, percent. But it is a little, little bit more aligned with 2012. You know, and that's one thing to always consider. And I always have to try to keep in mind when I'm when I'm doing this presentation and we're just going through the surveys. Like, look, you're going to get anomalies here and there. Um, and I think one of the tricks and one of the hard things for us to do as a news organization is sort of 
what's a trend, what's an anomaly, what's a problem. And that's one of the things we're always trying to highlight. And again, I'll throw out this to this, to this, to this crowd. You can do us a lot of help and we're always welcome to it. If you think you spot something or you're curious, you know, if you want to know, hey, look, I'm seeing X. Is it a problem? Is it a trend? Is it an anomaly? Let us know. We'll dig into it. We'll try to figure it out because if you're interested in it, someone else is probably interested in it too. Um, in terms of reducing entry, hire, entry level hiring, cutting marketing costs, these were both up from 2013. 17.4% said they reduced entry level hiring and 13% said they cut marketing costs. Um, and that was versus 11.1% and 7.4% in 2013.